Why do you ever do anything? What's your motive for doing anything? Um, starting just from the moment you wake up. Why get out of bed? Why start breathing? Why do whatever? Are you being dragged along by events? Are you being dragged along by things you can't avoid doing? That for some reason, something in you doesn't want to do them. It's just a big pain in the ass. Um, one of my favorite authors of all time uh, was Charles Bukowski, still is. And he wrote about that. He wrote about the idea of just the sheer pointlessness of life and why do I have to do anything? It's not why do I do anything. It's why the hell do we live in a, in a world where something has to be done? Um, isn't that kind of the horror of existence? Um, he didn't 100% agree with that. He had certain you know, concessions to living in the world. Um, but uh, I've got a link below to a cartoon by uh, R. Crumb, famous R. Crumb of the stoned again thing from the 70s, anyone old enough to remember that, um, of Bukowski and one of his more famous lines. Um, just shows Bukowski getting up, looking very old, getting out of bed, putting his shoes on. And it's captioned, I don't know about other people, but when I bend over to put on my shoes in the morning, I think, Christ Almighty, now what? Um, that strikes me as acedia. That's encapsulating the whole phenomenon of torpor and lethargy and everything. Acedia is an interesting word. I talk about depression a lot. Um, acedia is slightly different in that it's often a philosophical as much as a, an emotional state or an epistemological state or an ontological state. <laughs> uh, how would you put it? You, acedia is a problem of the spirit as much as a problem of the body, whereas depression could be, in certain cases, completely body, completely uh, physical in its causes or whatever, even its remedies. Acedia tends towards the spiritual or the psychological or the mental or whatever you want to call it, that aspect of the totality of our being. Now, okay, how does that relate to human motive? Well, acedia, I think, I've often compared um, depression to AIDS in that when you get sick, your immune system is that, with that which you rely upon to cure your diseases. Um, but the problem with, with the HIV virus is, of course, it attacks your immune system. That's what it attacks. Uh, or it causes a deficiency, rather, in your immune system. So you, um, <clears throat> you're in kind of a, a double-bind kind of situation here in which the very tools that you normally rely upon to combat a certain ailment, in this case, acedia, is that which is under attack. Or torpor or lethargy, but there's an actual philosophical term for that state uh, when your actual your your tools for human motivation are under assault and everything is a weariness everything is horror, everything is boredom, listlessness everything is low energy and everything that you, you do you're just dragging yourself along it, even if, it, assuming you even managed to do that, whereas in Bukowski's books it was always he either goes to work or he starves to death. <laughs> so there's your motivation, purely negative motivation. Um, a lot of people attempt to deal with the CD by the use of what's known as the inner critic. You start developing a voice that prods you along to do things that, um, come on, get out of bed now, you can't lay in bed forever or you'll die uh, this kind of thing um, this is how a CD, you know, does get psychological and it becomes something of a vicious circle, because if your motivation is purely negative, if, you've, if the only thing that gets you to do anything is this inner voice that tells you you're a jerk or you're a failure or you're deficient otherwise if you don't do it, uh, you get really tired over time because you just get tired because every action becomes just avoiding a whip. It has nothing to do with anything that you want. It has nothing to do with any wellspring of will inside of you or desire or anything like that. Um, it uh, It's just 
pain avoidance in one form or another. So you, if you suffer from acedia, you're you've, you're in the nasty situation, or you're um, subject to the grave temptation of deliberately engineering anxiety in yourself, because it will actually anxiety is a powerful enough negative force to prod you out of bed in the morning. And, you know, you just open your eyes and go, oh, my God, i got a million things to do, and suddenly you're up on your feet and you're moving around. Now, that is a short-term uh, fix that has long-term <laughs> problems, uh, in that if you come to rely on anxiety, if you come to rely on the inner critic uh, as a means of doing anything or as a means of motivating yourself to do anything, to get over that horrible feeling of futility when you look down at your shoes in the morning and you go, why do I have to do this? You know, or what next? You know, just another friggin' day that doesn't mean anything that I have to react to, that I have to do something with. Um, even if it's a complete waste of time. Uh, Bukowski was huge on illustrating the, the futility of existence. Um, that's one of the things that I think he did masterfully was illustrate futility. Uh, the futility of the human condition. But again, you you know, you read further and you realize that he didn't think that life was itself was a waste of time, even though it was futile. He still believed that one must live. Or he acted as though he did. Or he spoke as though he did. Um, but you're faced with all these things, like reasonable questions like, now what in life? What should I do? Um... But he somehow had the energy to write prolifically and to become a highly successful author. So not all of his being was consumed by acedia, uh, by deliberately inculcated torpor, i.e. drinking heavily to induce a state of lethargy to overcome the anxiety that he had summoned to deal with his acedia. <laughs> um, there are other ways, I guess, of trying to relax. There are other ways of overcoming a, um, a sense of anxiety that won't lead to acedia. Here's the, here's the uh, again, sort of the recap of the vicious circle. You wake up in the morning, everything assaults your senses, and you go, oh, God, I'm still here in this dump, this horrible existence. Now what? I've got to lace up my shoes. Okay, that kind of is the problem, right, that besets us all, every second of our existence. Now what? Okay. Are you reacting to the outside world, or is there something inside of you that seeks to act in the world? Reacting to the outside world is not the same thing as acting in the world, right? Um, acting in the world means that you're, um, you want to go out into the world, and reacting to the world is Bukowski, oh, now what? Um... You wake up, you have the now what, and you don't know how to motivate yourself to do anything, so you have to think of something to get yourself out of bed. Well, in Bukowski's case, if I don't get out of bed, I starve. Negative uh, motivation. Planting the seed of anxiety in his own mind. Work or die. <laughs> um, or work or suffer, even. Even worse. Anxiety. He's not starving, and he's not suffering, but he thinks, if I don't work, then bad things happen. There's another way to deal with acedia and lethargy, and that's the way that you know I hinted at in previous videos on Tantra. Um, at the end of the day, Hatha Yoga, which is the yoga that most of us see people doing when you turn yourself into a pretzel or whatever, the ultimate aim of it, they say, is power. It's called Shakti power. And Shakti is the female principle that it apparently um, animates the entire physical universe, Prakriti. Um, okay, um, I think it's fair to say that most people know that I don't really subscribe to this kind of thing. It strikes me as woo. But it could be a poetic means of expressing energy in general will drive desire. The, n the negative 
portion of desires, what I referred to when I spoke of the inner critic, when I spoke of acedia being counteracted by anxiety. Um, you have no energy, so you prod yourself with the inner critic to get up and do something. How about another motivation? How about you have a surfeit of energy that you want to expend? Instead of now what? It's, well, what can I do? I'm looking forward to doing something. Not because I think that I have to and I have no other choice, but because I desire it. That, to me, is, for you know a humanist like myself, I don't like the title atheist, but I like to you know hang out with atheists and discuss things with them because I don't factor God into anything that I have to say. I don't believe in woo of any sort. But I understand what it means to have energy, to have drive in your character, to have forceful, confident belief in acting in the world. Uh, that strikes me as the opposite of acedia. Another opposite of acedia, where anxiety is one way of motivating yourself out of it, one way of dealing with that pair of shoes that need to be laced up at your feet when you get up in the morning, and energy, shakti, I guess, um, power, um, vitality, whatever you want to call it, is another way. I want to get my shoes tied up so I can get out and do the real things in life. Now, how do you make that kind of paradigm shift from thinking, Christ Almighty, now what? To, you know, when you wake up in the morning, to, hmm, let's see, what can we do today? How do you do that? Um... I think that if, you, if you've fallen prey to acedia, if you've fallen prey to something that's attacking your motives, if you've fallen prey to the HIV virus of the soul, um, where acedia attacks your vitality in and of itself, I think that you're in for the long haul to turn that ship around. But it can be done. Um, I've suffered from acedia. Uh, I called it, where it was called, white depression, back around about 19... 93, 94, something like that, where I simply couldn't get out of bed. I was so severely depressed. And it was also, it had strong physiological um, symptoms, if, if they are indeed physiological. In other words, I was horribly weakened. My vitality had just gone. I had stopped eating. I would lost a lot of weight. I, you know, every act of doing anything was a horrible weariness. Just acedia made manifest. Depression. Severe depression. And, of course, I had gone the way of anxiety to deal with um, listlessness. And, of course, that wears you out over time. It'll get you it'll get you out of bed for a couple of years. The anxiety factor, okay? I, there's no reason, no positive reason for me to get out of bed so I can prod myself out of bed by shoving a hot poker where the sun don't shine, i.e. deliberately bringing about anxiety, um, or I can motivate myself positively. I get out of bed because there's things that I want to do, as opposed to things that I fear not doing. There's a big difference. Um, and again, the Eastern religious philosophies have a name for that. It's shakti, it's vitality, it's power, force. Um, interesting tie-in with things like Nietzsche. As I say, I discovered Nietzsche through the back door, through um, my dabbling in Indian philosophy. And even though he sort of said that's all a pile of garbage, when you read his works a certain way, it does sound awfully tantra-like. Uh, the will to power could simply be the will to vitality, the will to energy, the will to Shakti, even if you wanted to call it that, I think he would probably want to hit me over the head with a blunt object for comparing his work to Eastern philosophy, but it does strike a chord with me in that regard. Um, so how do you inculcate power? How do you raise the Shakti? How do you raise inner vitality as opposed to dealing with the normal torpor of life negatively. 
How do you create a positive inner power uh, to get you to do things um, that is far more comfortable or more affirmative than the other form of, of motivation, which is anxiety, which is the inner critic, which is uh, negative motivation. To me, that's Tantra. How to sharpen your motivations so that your motivation is all positive. Or in as much as it's possible, it's positive. You're never going to have completely positive motivation to do anything. Sometimes you don't feel like eating, but you're starving to death, and so you just pour some food down your belly. Uh, but how about enough of it to make your life free of the fundamental weariness as expressed in Bukowski's cartoon? Link below. Um, Christ Almighty, now what? Well, how do you get out of that very mindset?